This is DJ Pierre, Afro Acid King, the Acid Master, the Wild Pitch Man, and you're watching Underground TV. Keep it locked. The Underground. Hello and welcome to the very special edition of The Underground. In this show we travel to Amsterdam to bring you the highlights from the 13th annual dance music convention known as ADE. Held at the historic canal side of Amsterdam with over 2,000 industry professionals in attendance and a huge party lineup spread all over the city. ADE 2008 was one of the best and biggest to date. Amsterdam ADE is tending to be one of the biggest conferences in the world. It's really good, everybody loves Amsterdam, it's a good, it's a good city to do it. It's uh, very liberal. I guess it's probably about uh, to be my sixth time being at the Amsterdam dance event and uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a good music convention because you find uh, a lot of the creative people here, um, you know, meaning musicians, producers, the DJs. I mean, yeah, as you can see, it's sold out. It's packed and everyone's here. I mean, if you look behind me, it's the who's who of dance music. Um, and it's a great way to do business. It's a lot more condensed. It's, um, it's a very beneficial date in the whole music calendar, really. You know, it's far more focused than, than Miami. So, yeah, it's good. We, we talk about copyright. We talk about, you know, the general direction of, of, of what we're doing. And we have, a, you know, a great opportunity to have the most amazing time at night. But we do know that there's also business to be done during the day. And uh, that's what we do. Every time it's getting bigger, you know, and every time it's better weather. <laughs> uh, no, it's good. I mean, it's always a big mess on the, on the street. There's more people uh, outside than inside. I'm, I'm surprised. It's, it's really different as I thought about it before. It's, it's small, these small houses, but it's very, fem very, very, it's a nice private feeling here. It's, it's, it's great. Everybody's so near together and uh, it's a great thing. But I just arrived one hour ago, so I will see what's going on and uh, I think we'll have a great time here. Coming up on the program, we speak to Dave Clark about his love of Amsterdam. Ferry Corson and Paul Van Dyke discuss trance. Paul Oakenfold shows off his new toys, and Sven Fath throws an Amsterdam edition of his Cocoon Disco Invaders parties. All that and much more is coming your way in the next half hour, so stay right where you are. Underground. Probably the most outspoken techno DJ, Dave Clark, is a regular in the city of Amsterdam. We call up with a legendary man to find out about his passion for the lifestyle in the Netherlands. I've always had a thing with Amsterdam. My first foreign date gig in Amsterdam was in the very, very, very early 90s, I think 1990 itself. And when I came over here and I saw it for the first time, I was mesmerised by it. The weather here is worse than England. Don't let them tell you that the weather here is the same as England, because it's not, because it's really warm in the south of England. But there is something special about this place, especially in the centre, in, around the canals. And one of the good things about Dutch society is not status driven. Uh, not car driven, not status driven. It's a very equal society in many ways. Although, you have to realise that if you live in the centre of Amsterdam, it's also a privileged society. But it's not like England, where it's very class driven. And I'm fed up of class society. I'm really fed up of it. And what I get from being in Amsterdam is that it's more relaxing and I get a better karma from being here. So next year, I really hope to basically move over here full time. Well, the music scene in England um, at a dance level is a bit tired. Um, there's nothing new being presented on radio in my estimation. There's some good clubs. Fabric in London, amazing club, good sound system, uh, people that know what they're doing technically, which is very rare. Uh, the north of England is also very, very good. And then of course you've got Scotland, then of course you've got Belfast, where, where there's a little bit more edge, where people have been through recession many times, where you know music is much more important to them. It's a bit more edge, but in the south of England, I don't really pick up that, except for a, a few small pockets. It's a lot more lightweight. And Holland, there's a lot of good music being made. Not just techno, but a lot of good music. Of course, it's the home of trance, but we won't talk about that. But there's a lot of good music here. And I'm, I'm lucky enough to be given the chance to also present radio in the Lowlands. So I have uh, a radio show on a radio station, which is nationwide here, 3FM. Uh, Studio Brussels, which covers the whole of Belgium. And basically, the response to that is very, very good. And so I have a freedom of artistic freedom. And for me, the radio show is not about promotion for me. It's about promotion of the new good music that doesn't get a chance. I've just done a, a compilation called Back in the Box, which is uh, all about old school house music, 
they forced me, I was going to say, but they've pressurized me with good intention to do this. And after a year of doing it, I wanted to do it, but I just couldn't find the space. After a year of doing it, I did it for them. And I'm really happy with it because it basically it just reminds me of a mixtape I would have made for my old knackered Citroen back in the 80s. Uh, and it has lots of old uh, music now, which people, if they want to listen to it, can find out where I came from and what inspired me. Uh, I've also started doing a label, which uh, is not about my own music. I'm not going to produce any music myself for this label. It's just about providing a platform for talent, which I believe isn't getting the oxygen it needs. I'm not going to make any money from it. Um, making money from records is like so 10 years ago. But um, I think it's important to keep putting you know, new music out there. So. Sven Vath has built up a solid reputation for throwing some of the best shindigs wherever he plays. And with this, his Amsterdam edition of Cocoon Disco Invaders, it was no exception. Guy Gerber was first up on the bill, warming up in the bouncing sand club, ready for Lord Vath himself. As we roamed around between the two conference buildings, we bumped into a few jocks that we just couldn't resist having a chat with. I came here maybe for the first time, I was like, I think it's my fifth year, and it's quite, it, it's, it's quite big now. And then we started actually like in the small house over there, and now it's two rooms. The big topic of the year mm, might be why are there not many girls working in the dance industry? <laughs> <laughs> Last year and the year before, everybody was complaining about uh, uh, the music industry going downwards and uh, I've, I haven't heard anybody talking about that this year. Everybody is really talking about what they are doing, positive stuff, uh, everybody is looking ahead. So it's not just one topic, but it's more a certain vibe that I really think is uh, really positive this year. As a, as a DJ and as a, as a producer and as a record label owner, uh, what really excites me about this music is the way that it uh, always evolves. It's a constant you know, reshaping of sounds and it's a constant reshaping of trends and, and what's current and what's not. And I think this journey is, is, is what I love most about dance music. It's like, it's a very vibrant and evolving kind of uh, music. I've always been a DJ who's been very eclectic in, in what I like and what I don't like. I want to be capable of, of DJing in, in, in many different circumstances. Either it's, you know, a big club or a small lounge or, you know, a big festival or, uh, uh, you know, a small uh, beach party. I, I want to be the one that, that, that can navigate through all those uh, venues and try and do my best, you know. Uh, so I try to be versatile, I try to musically um, be inspired and have my ears open to many different genres and, 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 and come up with my own mix of, of everything that I hope is good and put it into one nice little box and, and shake it up and, you know, and try and give it back to the people. That's, that's what I do, that's what I believe is what a DJ is. Uh, I, I'm not the sort of star in terms of you know DJing uh, uh, just one sound and my, only my own records. I, I, I like DJing to be pure and to be about you know something real. I just started a new label called Ideal Records. So confuses. I don't know, maybe was a bit too old-fashioned for me and I did it since 15 years and now it's time for something new and Ideal One is the new Dubfire and uh, Huntemann uh, called Dios. We met only once in Düsseldorf so uh, for dinner but uh, he wrote me on, on MySpace so that he likes my music and we were in contact and I said, yeah, I like your music too and then oh, maybe let's start a com uh, collaboration, why not? And yeah, 
I started a track, we sent him the, all the logic files so from this, uh, the, the project and uh, gave it to him and he was working on it, sent it back and this three, four times and then Diablo was done and uh, Dios was much faster. It's a good thing so because we have the same uh, feeling for, for the music at the moment. So between techno and house and, and so in between not too fast and yeah, it's cool. First year I came here I started working on my album. I had my own little label and yeah, was just really s starting off feeling a little bit. And then it just grew and grew and we talked to international partners, kept them in the loop about what was going to happen. And uh, well, last year I signed with Sony and now I actually finished the album and last night we did the release party and it's actually out there and this is the first year where I can really you know, reap the benefits of, of what I'm doing. It's an album which I, I played all the instruments, did all the vocals uh, and produced it myself. I'm not really into DJ culture, I think it's mostly very boring. Um, but you know, I like to have four decks, bring my MC and together we, we hype the crowd and we go into the crowd, start pogoing, crowd serving and just have fun and turn it into a rock concert instead of just uh, looking into my laptop. Yeah, no, I mean, it has to be a party, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a DJ set, but with a little extra. Yeah, when I come home, I like to take it all off and produce my music in the naked because it's like drinking milk. Uh, it's, you know, it's, sometimes you're like a mad professor. You're, you're making music, it's, it's nonstop. You wake up and somewhere in the middle of the night, somebody comes in, a friend who has a key, and you're like, shit, you're in it. I never got dressed. Because you're, you're in the moment and it just all happens and, you know, it's, it's crazy. I have my studio in my house, so for this album I was in my own house for four years. People think I go to parties, have sex in the Playboy Mansion, but it's, it's basically been very nerdy and very fucked up. But I, I did it, it's done and now I'm ready to go out there and kick ass. I think that the, the, the mostly influences come just from the life, you know, when, when you're traveling a lot and, and when you... Uh, have a lot of things what, what happened, you know, when you see a lot of different cultures and you come back home, you see things happen at home, private things, and then the gigs and all the things, you see different crowds and all the things you get in your head and just coming out of your fingers when you're in the studio. And so I, I just let my music inspir inspirate by the, by the life. This is the most important thing for me. And uh, what happened then, what happened in the studio, I can't handle. It just... Uh, the ID is coming just out. It's it, it's not. I can't describe it how it is. You know, it's you just write the music and I, But I think that a lot of influences and things you saw when you're on the road and all the things you get in your head. And um, I really don't want to miss all these things I I see. And 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 I'm I'm really thankful for for the, all these travel things because this changes my music a lot of it. to see different cultures and to meet different cultures is good for to have a bright horizon when, you, when, when it comes to doing music. And uh, so I'm thankful for that and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to do a lot of more tours in the future to get more influences music-wise and, and people-wise from all over the world. That makes music really bright horizon. Still to come, we hear from Paul Oakenfold, Paul Van Dyke, Ferry Corsten, DJ Pierre and Kevin Sanderson. Underground.
For the past 10 years, Ferry Corson and Paul Van Dyke have been amongst some of the most successful and consistent dance DJs and producers, gathering crowds of thousands wherever they play. We caught up with Paul Van Dyke and Ferry for a chat about their music and the dawn of the digital age. The reason why I like trends, you know, it's... I love it when people really go off. You know, when, when I see 5,000 people, 10,000 people in front of me, I want them to see, I want them to go nuts, go crazy. Um, I, I'm not saying that you cannot get that vibe with house or techno, but there's something with trance, with, because it's so melodic, it's, uh, you know, it's more, instead of groove, it's based on emotion, you know, it's based on melody. So, you know, when you see that, that build up, and you see the crowd really respond to it with the arms in the air and the eyes closed and look up like that. It's just, you know, it's something amazing. So, you know, the, the music is very powerful. Um, one, uh, one downside of, of, of trance music, I don't want to say trance events because I really like those, but trance music. Uh, there was, a, <clears throat> there was a, a period where it was very much the same. Every track sounded the same. Everybody, all the producers, um, use the same sort of presets in their in the in their the synthesizers and so every track sounded the same and um, it was a bit it got a bit boring but now I think the last year year and a half uh, trans music has become really interesting stuff it's uh, you know it, it leans to min towards minimal but then with a the melodic side to it or it leans to like bang on trans which with some some great vibes great melodies um, so you know, there's, a, there's a lot more now going on in this one particular genre than, than before and that's really what I, uh, what I like. Well, I don't really affiliate myself with the trans scene too much to be honest and I'm not just saying that because it's like trendy or not trendy. Um, basically you can see interviews I gave back in 94 because the thing is for me it's all electronic music and I definitely play things that have trancey elements but just as much uh, you find techno and break beats and and, and house and electro and all that in the sets because this is what at the end of the day is making the whole you know experience of music interesting that's one thing the other thing is if you say the whole sort of like you know trancy sound is not really that glamorous in UK um, then on the other hand I don't really understand why then the trance arenas on all the festivals are the biggest ones why are the favorite DJs of the people playing that trancy sound? That doesn't really make any sense. So at the end of the day, it's probably coming down to media attention and a certain sort of wrong reflection in the media of a particular musical style. Because at the end of the day, it's like you can go to any of those dance festivals. The biggest tent is always the one where they play the full on trancy sound. Uh, it, was a, it was a party, there's two rooms, one house room or minimal. And the other room was about 15,000 people, and then it was full on trans room. And I played there, and uh, at some point I played my, uh, my track Beautiful. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, in the breakdown, all the people in the middle, about 5,000 people, went sitting down on their knees. And uh, I was like, whoa, what's going on? And then when the beat came back in, they all jumped up at the same time. It was really crazy, I've never seen anything like it that big, you know? And then right after that, they, they pulled out uh, a big uh, a big banner. I think it must have been eight meters, with uh, the logo of my my, my logo. And uh, it said uh, they, they quoted uh, the lyrics from the song. It said, "Everything is beautiful. Argentina will follow you forever." And if you read that and you see that and you see all these people sit on the floor, it's just something. Yeah, I really had goosebumps everywhere. It was amazing. I hate it that people think that they can just download everything and you know and they and not and they don't understand why it's harmful. You know, if everybody would just download stuff and none of the producers make any money anymore to put back into their studio, you know, then yeah, if you keep keep doing this and then in a few years' time you can forget about listening to music because there won't be any. There's one thing um, that we should never forget. It's not just about an individual artist maybe earning less money if you download the music illegally. It's a very complex setup. 
because if that artist, that particular one, you know, doesn't make any money from making music anymore, he's not going to be able to buy new synthesizers. So the developers are not going to develop new stuff because they don't have anybody to sell it to. So basically the whole music, the whole creative part of the music is going to die out as well, leading to the fact that music is going to become really boring. And unless we develop other sources of income that are involving the creative process of making music, um, you know, we, we have to find a solution for that. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I can just speak for myself. I'm spending hours and hours and weeks and weeks in the studio and, um, you know, trying to do what I do as good as I anyhow can. And then for people to say, it doesn't really mean anything to me, it's worth this, I'm just taking it down, of the net, in, down from the internet. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. The reason why I am what I am today, uh, you know, is because I have eight people working with me. You know, I have to pay these people as well. So, it, it, you know, it's not as simple as like, oh, there's free music. Because yeah. I'm, I'm not the only one who benefits from it. It's, it's, I support eight people with that. So, and that's what, really, what a lot of people, of course, don't see because they don't see the people behind the scenes. Hey, it's Paul Lokenfold here. Um, welcome to ADE. It's been a wonderful conference. Um, for me, it's been very good in terms of business. Perfecto Records, Perfecto Digital. A lot of new DJs, producers we've signed, and it's been good to attend. ADE wanted me to bring along my console that I've been using on the Madonna tour that I'm currently on. We leave tomorrow to go back to the US, and we tour to the end of uh, December. Well, the idea of the console, uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can pan to the front, we have two DVD uh, setups here, and I perform and play visuals live with uh, the technology there. It's got everything. I could even check the emails. <laughs> the album that we just released was really uh, what I wanted to do was take all the classic tracks that I'd played over the last decade or so and put it into a mix and mix it in key so that it flowed really well. So there's a lot of edits, re-edits, and uh, the structure arrangement works as a DJ set. So it's doing really well, actually. I've got a movie that I scored, because I mainly score movies now. So I've got two movies coming out this year. One's a British gangster movie called The Heavy, comes out in December, and Nobel's Son, that is Danny DeVito, Alan Rickman's new film, that comes out in about three weeks' time. 20 years of house music was a closing panel at the ADE, which turned out to be a real treat. For four pan years of house music have held a historic discussion in front of a room full of the captivated audience as they reflected on the past two decades of the DJ culture. 20 years of Acid House panel was very interesting because it's funny, I, I even learned some things from other perspectives like how Dave Clark sees the 20 years of house and how, how interesting he sees um, how it, it started from the beginning. I mean, I feel like house music should be more about, about the, the, the DJ and him bringing the music and, and the producers and more than, than the clubs. But now, it's sort of after the panel, I kind of see it from both perspectives, you know, that uh, it's kind of okay that, that, that the clubs aren't like, that the DJs aren't the total masses of house music. I mean, because you do need to have those super clubs. They don't have to be all about just having super DJs without super clubs. So that's a very interesting perspective, you know, I got from the panel. Uh, the past six months, I have seen a movement going back toward like the original type productions of house music, kind of going back to the roots a little bit. Um, I still see it being overpowered by techno, minimal tech, and trance, but. I do see it moving toward more of a uh, more laid-back, original, classic type style of producing house music, which is good, you know, and it's good for me. I can get back to my roots, so to speak, you know, so that, yeah, I do see that movement. Uh, I can't say nobody inspires me like I've been inspired before I started GGN or while the beginning stages, you know, it's a different time and the music just isn't made like it used to be to give you that uh, blueprint. Minimal music is 
what it is. I wouldn't say it's not music. I would say it's not a music that I can play on a dance floor, you know. Uh, from what I've heard, there's some sounds of it that sound interesting. And it's not really dance music to me. It's like a in between listening, warm up, you know, to me style. And it's not suited for me, you know. I don't see it as uh, being a pivotal part of electronic music, in my opinion. The underground. That's about it from ADE 2008. Thanks for tuning in. For more information on forthcoming programmes and for more clips from ADE, check out undergroundtv.co.uk. Well, thanks for watching. Um, all the best and see you next year at ADE. The idea for contact came from many different places. Underground TV has given you the chance to celebrate this New Year's Eve with the one and only Milo. We've teamed up with Plug Night Club in Sheffield and we're offering you the chance to win a pair of tickets to see Milo this New Year's Eve at Plug in Sheffield. Not only will you be put up in a hotel, you will also receive £50 towards your travel and a complimentary bottle of bubbly to welcome 2009 in with style. All you have to do to win is answer the following question. Where was Milo born? If you think it's the Isle of Wight, then text Milo A to 82055. For Isle of Sky, text Milo B to 82055. For the Isle of Dogs, then text Milo C to 82055. The cost of the text message is 25 pence. Alternatively, you can email your answer to info at the plug.com. Edwards must be, of course, over the age of 18. For full terms and conditions, visit www.undergroundtv.co.uk forward slash competition. Good luck.